Alright, what's up Giga Gamers? Welcome to the Strat Chat. We're going to be doing the B patch review. This is 12.23B, the mid patch. Uh, it's preseason, so stuff's going all over the place. But uh, let's check out some of the changes. Right here we've got base health regen. We're basically a lot of rollbacks on the Mundo buffs. Uh, it's really funny because right here you see it under nerfed champions and yet he gained 4%. Uh, basically they thought they were reworking some tools, whatever it is. I don't know, but Mundo was busted. Hopefully you got it in while the getting was good. Uh, base health regen is down. Passive health cost uh, for getting the briefcase is up. Passive addi additional maximum health regen uh, is going down Q health at all costs uh, is changing so that it's less early more later E health cost less early more later and our cooldown is going up so basically this guy's getting massive nerfs he was all over the place and he was going where he pleases a little bit too much uh, to what we all want Hecarim, another super strong champion, uh, percent bonus damage per stack is going down by one full percent and one per percent on his scaling, which is massive, huge Hecarim nerf. So uh, he was the king of the jungle, now not so much. Passive move speed from Janna going down 2%, that's part of her identity. E bonus AD, however, uh, or I should say also, is going down by 10 at its highest rank. She's been on top of the support chain for a while, ever since the Lulu uh, nerfs, basically. Lilia has been the queen of the changes from range to melee. She's just getting a lot of uh, extra benefits that people weren't really intending, especially from things like Conqueror. Uh, so her pa uh, passive percent health is going down. Q magic damage is going down. And Q Outer Ring means it's also going down. This is by 5, but it is her spam spell, so you will notice it. Um, but these are meant to target <clears throat> a lot of her laning. She's basically just way too safe right now. Lux, ever since the nerfs and she hasn't been played in bot lane, she needs a little help in mid. So they're giving her some AP scaling. 10% on the E and 20% on the R. Another reminder, don't get Ludens. Scale off of AP. She's much stronger with the AP. I, I recommend Crowd of the Shattered Queen or you go Everfrost so that you can actually hold people in place a little bit longer, keep yourself alive. That's more damage too. Um, but really get that Rabidons, get that Magi's, stack that AP. Her ratios are insane. Uh, Mordekaiser fixed a bug where Mordekaiser could proc his passive by using his abilities on small monsters. Um, this was due to a change where they put it in the patch saying that one Q no longer just instantly turns it on on Raptors. It's something that Giga Gamers were doing right. Nobody else was doing right, but now they fixed it and by calling it a bug. Um, <clears throat> anyways, Neela. Big changes, all right? So pay attention because this is a champion that we don't uh, see very very much. Q physical damage, all right? The base amount is going uh, is staying the same, but the base off the total AD, 10% off the total AD goes down for later, all right? Q damage increase based on critical strike chance was 0 to 100. Now it goes to 0 to 120, all right? So a little bit more. Uh, effect as you get to your end game build. Now, one of the things that we recommend on this champion, all right, is you get that rush. You actually second item your quick blades or your infinity edge, depending on your build, and then just buy two agility cloaks. Just immediately spike yourself up to the extra crit chance because she's going to scale off that crit chance, and it's a good way to get a fast buoy on your build. Passive healing on basic and formless attacks against champions was 0 to 15% post mitigation scaling with crit. Now it's 0 to 20 scaling with crit. Okay, so they gave her a little bit back on the crit. Our damage over time, all right, going down by 7%. Fairly significant because of all the repetitions. Uh, our damage at the end of the cast is unchanged. Our total damage is effectively going down by 28%. All right, so. 28% uh, of your bonus AD, which by the end of the game, maybe we're talking about 200. Uh, that's 56 damage. That's pretty significant. Your R healing, 30 to 45 post mitigation, scaling with crit, now goes 20 to 50. So less early, more later. Basically, they want her to have a trough in the beginning of the game. Still exceptionally champ, uh, strong champion, especially with Novori Quick Blades, and especially in a team that gives you the ability to run Shield Bash. So if you have a Janna support and an Ivern Jungle and a Shen top, I still think this is the very best team that someone can put together for a competitive. Uh, so keep on rocking it if you've got your Clash team, but in solo queue, make sure that you've got an Enchanter in your back pocket. 
Ramis has been king of the jungle awkwardly, and I don't mind it. It's okay. Like, let it happen. Ramis has counterplay. There's lots of things you can do against him, but he's been too strong. Um, I think the stats lie a little bit because in a large part, he mostly gets picked into the champions that he's good against, so his win rate's high. But anyways, uh, bonus armor going down by 10. Duration uh, of the cooldown is going up by a second. And the bonus magic resistance is going down. So this is a huge nerf to, to Ramus, especially hitting his laning phase if you were trying to play Ramus top. Ooh dear. Mana costs are going down. However, the bonus physical damage, all right, of a target's maximum health is going down 1% on its scaling uh, and 2% at the end. So this should get rid of some of those Prowler Claw one-shot builds. Uh, the only counterplay to that was treating it like Kha'Zix Isolation. Just be with somebody so that it ricochets more. Uh, and that way you don't get hit by all the procs. But it still was a lot of damage. And the extra damage on hit is going up by 10% uh, of your bonus AD. But losing 10 of its da raw damage. Right? So again, uh, giving a little more of the scaling but taking away the one shot. Less early power to the Q-Max build. Uh, and here's the awakened physical damage, <clears throat> 2 to 5% with 3% scaling, is now 2 to 4% with 2% scaling. Uh, so massive, massive, massive nerf. They basically don't want him to be one-shotting people in the end game the way that he was. Uh, the Prowler's Claw build is still very good. Uh, Black Cleaver is still very good. And even getting a second lethality item like Yumu so that you could get, uh, target and gap close is still very good. But there should be a little bit more balance in his builds now. Our base damage per tick being buffed, which it need, needed. It's not a good source of damage. It's only good for the slowing effect, so I still don't recommend building AP. Zed was in much need of a nerf, even after Ravenous Hydra changes. But with casted in buffs, the environment is strong for him. So Zed should still be more or less okay, but he lost 10... To 10 base damage on his uh, Q. His E cooldown is being upped by a second late. All right, that's pretty big because your ability to get second and third spells in the rotation is going down. And your E physical damage is going down by five. So Zed taking a pretty big hit. Uh, Jock Show getting rocked. All right, and this, this was important. This had to happen. This was one of the first like high skill cap items in the game where you actually needed to practice using the item itself to really get, get good at it, right? Zonia's was maybe another one like it, and Deathfire Grasp and Prowler's Claw is still like that, right? Things that have choices when to use them, you need a lot of skill, but Jock Shows was very interesting because you're gaining all these stats over combat, and then eight seconds in was a timer that no one had really needed to know. So Jock Show was showing very poorly. Now it's showing too strong, especially after they buffed it to get more people to buy it. Anyways, what we end up with is 100 more to complete it, and it's significantly worse. All right, so you're going to end up with 8 to less MR and armor when this pops. It's still going to be an okay item for those sticky champions that want to be in the middle of the fight. Uh, but basically, they're trying to get rid of those builds where it was just Ravenous Hydra into Jock Show. Rinse, repeat, put it on everybody, and, and it was too good. So... They're still going to make strides in that progression. The new OP is going to be Radiant Virtue. If your champion can use it, you probably should. Lord Dom's Regards, Giant Slayer bonus damage. 0 to 15 is 0 to 25. All right. They're doing this because they have to make more of a choice between Heal Cut and uh, Lord Dom's. When you're going there, we we're talking about changing the heal, the healing items and giving back 40% to Executioner's Calling. Moss Stomper is still the best because it just has a better ability than everybody else. It doesn't matter how small you make this shield. The fact that you gave that you give a shield in Tenacity makes it the best one. <clears throat> Ravenous Hydra getting hit again. 40%, 20%. And you lose 60% of your stacks on death. All right. Um, it's still really good. <laughs> Sorry, guys. But uh, you know what? This is probably the end. This will probably be the last nerf that they need to hit. The, it will be okay for this to be the best item because it doesn't go into end game fantasy builds of triple crit or triple AP into Rabadons or, you know, it just doesn't synergize with other, with many other items. Um, so you don't really build Ravenous Hydra as like part of another build. You just say, ah, I build Ravenous Hydra because it's good. So it should be good. It should be a 
better than average item and it should be good in those average like 20 to 25 minute games where you're only getting two items ravenous hydra still can be really solid but as far as going to the very end of the game you're going to want to ship it most likely if you're already stacked off but if you've died you've brought it down to zero stacks and you're looking at end game whether or not you want a fifth crit item for example for your crit build you can ship the hydra storm razor getting a little bit of love because nobody builds it it's still not enough for it to get played Tiamat getting the same change that Ravenous Hydra is getting for the less splash. Uh, the Now, the jungle changes. This was much needed. Uh, now, they had listed it at 20% originally, but apparently they just made it 30. Uh, this is what was allowing junglers to solo Baron all the time. We can still do it on Yorick. There's a couple other champions. You'll want to update it. If you have a list of champions and you play in the jungle, uh, leave a comment in the bottom below whether or not you could still solo Baron. How many items and what time? Uh, because it's still worth noting, 20% damage redu reduction is a lot, and it's enough for a lot of these champions to kill the Baron. Uh, the gold in the jungle, look at this. Everywhere it's getting nerfed, and the bonus treats gold. Basically, jungle was way too strong if you were on a power farmer like Shivana. Uh, this is also going to hit my York build. It's going to hit all those champions that liked not getting invaded and just power farming. So the Shivanas, the Mordekaisers, Yorks of the world, Master Yi. Uh, they all got hit by this and they needed it because the jungle the way it works now it's harder to invade right taking camps away from their side of the map is harder than doing it on your own side of the map so when you're invading you're going for a kill but you're also maybe not getting the camp and definitely if you're on enemy team you're trying to take their camps it's much harder to get in there get in get out so all of these changes meant that jungle farmers just got to keep on playing at their at their will so uh, you know, it's a good change. It probably needed to happen, but uh, this fact that we still get 20% damage reduction on epics will still be interesting to see how many champions can uh, can solo the Baron. I still think that a Mumu with two items, one of them being Demonic Embrace, will be able to do it, uh, and we'll have to see which other champions. I'm positive Yorick will still be able to do it, so uh, let me know again in the comments where you see it. All right, now let's check on the updates. Zeri was out of control. We told you this was going to happen. She's going to get nerfed, but get it in while the getting's good. Uh, Zach, v great increase on, on his champion. Cho'Gath, same thing. They're getting very healthy changes. Malphite's starting to get into that territory, and now with the Ramus buffs, Malphite will be the premier anti-AD in the top lane. So if you see a Jace, if you see a Vayne, if you see a uh, Quinn, any of these champions, just grab up Malphite. Um, and just slam the early Sunfire on him and then build out the rest of your build, usually with Radiant Virtue. Uh, Cassante also continuing to go up. This is a play skill thing as well. He's going to get nerfed eventually, but not yet. Amumu, these buffs were unneeded. The, the jungle uh, is where he really shines now. This, this increase of 5% in the jungle is out of this world. Too strong. Uh, Tom G Kench got some ancillary buffs. You know, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of AP. Um, it wasn't affecting most people's builds, but it is opening an opportunity. We have tried Nasher's Lich Bane, and it was really funny. Uh, I don't know how good it is. Scion is still behind in the tank lineup up top lane. Sejuani's still doing great. Maokai is in a great spot. And this was the hilarious one. Rakain got buffed, but his win rate went down. That's because they buffed Blue Kane, which is very hard to play. So a lot of people who weren't play Kane players started playing Kane, and that's what caused the the dip it's still good if you love kane kane's in a fantastic spot right now uh mundo went through a buff and a nerf expect these numbers to drop now cassadin was the the other big winner uh, along with zeri getting the uh, gatling laser beam e that you can cast several times in fights lilia has just constantly been strong um everybody picking her up conqueror changes everything she's finally going to start making uh pegs down they probably need to hit her one more time mm -hmm. Mordekaiser finally came back down to earth, uh, as did Yumi. Shivana, now with the change in the jungle, the changes to the items that she loved, the the change to her, uh, <clears throat> dealing fifth, what was it, from 350 down to 300%, uh, big changes in her E% percent damage. All of this is, is finally brought Shivana back down to where she belongs. Syndra got a massive nerf, all right? She's still a premier scaler, but I don't know what, when you would pick Syndra, when you could pick Cassadin. Probably if they have an AD Assassin in the mid lane, you can't, you still can't pick Cassadin. Maybe that's where you get Syndra if you want scaling. But you should probably be going for Victor at this point over that. Uh, and Trundle got rocked, right? And it shows in the win rate. He was basically 
the champion, the single target damage jungle champion that was doing the best, that he got the best benefits, uh, apart from maybe Shen, from the item, from the jungle item splashing damage, it helped Trundle out a ton because now he can focus his bites on the big target and it helps him clear those AoE camps uh, much faster. But uh, that big that big hit knocked him down. So there's your update. Hope you guys are having fun in the preseason. If you have a special build, something that's uh, just carving it up, let me know in the comments below, and I'll catch you on the rift. Catch you later. Peace.